Hey guys, welcome back to another video. First of all, sorry for not uploading for a full decade. But I'll show you how I've implemented the undo redo system. So let's just jump into the game. And if we're in the game, we can build the bridge. And then we can undo it and redo it. If we undo it and then start building again, like a different part, it will basically forget this part of it which is how most programs work actually. So, to have a basic understanding of what we need to do, we need to know what exactly an undo redo system is. An undo redo system is basically a list of actions which we've done in the LIFO order. LIFO stands for last in, first out, which basically means the last thing we've put into this array kind of type is what we will get back as first object. So, imagine a list with the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That means the last item in this list we've added is 5. However, when using a list, you can also sort the list. So it gives no guarantee that the list is in our needed LIFO order. Because in this case, the last number is the 1, while we are expecting number 5. That's where a stack comes in. A stack gives us a simple last in, first out collection of objects. So we are guaranteed that this collection is always in the correct order. If you would like to know more about the stack, please see the link in the video description. So I've gone ahead and created a little Unity scene where we can click on the floor and it will spawn an object. We can also click on an object and it will spawn an object on top of it. I've done that with this little script. Basically, whenever we click, we shoot a raycast, and if we hit something, we put or we instantiate a cube at the position of the raycast. Well, at the end of the raycast. Now we will try and create a undo redo system around it. So let's start by creating the scripts. We need a Command manager, command manager, and we need a interface called I action. So the I stands for interface. Let's open the I action class, and now we need to make an interface from this. So interface shouldn't derive from mono behavior, and let's work with this. What should this interface need to do? It needs to execute a command, so void execute command. And it needs to undo the command. So undo command. Basically this will undo whatever this does. So this does, for example, instantiate an object, and this will destroy the object. Now let's go to the command manager. What does the command manager need? So as we previously talked before, we need a stack. So let's go ahead and create a stack. This stack needs the interface action. History stack oh, equals new. And then not start and go ahead, create a public function called execute command and it accepts a action called action. What does this need to do? This action has to be executed via this. And then we need to add the action to the history stack. And we can, can do that via push. There it is. So with push we add uh, this action, basically the one we, we are receiving, to the history stack. Now we need to undo a command. So how do we do that? So public void undo command. So if the history stack count nope, that's wrong is higher than zero. So basically if anything is in there, oh, 
then we can do history stack dot pop dot undo act command there it is so now we will go back in the history and we'll get the item out of it and we'll execute the command however uh, we have an issue now because now we can't go back again because since we're creating an undo reader system so let's go ahead and create another stack uh, let's make it a redo history stack and then here we can do redo history stack dot uh, push again and what do we need to push this one history stack but we can peek so we will get the item but we won't take it out of the stack so now we are practically creating two stacks this one with the history and this one with everything we've already undoed so basically a previous version of this now we also need a redo command so public for void redo command so redo history stack dot count now again equals over no if so now we need to do the same as here except the other way around so basically this should be there this should be here Oh, and here. So now we need to actually create the command. So let's get back to Unity and create a new script called instantiate command. Let's open it up in Visual Studio. It needs to derive from the interface I action. So I action. Now an error comes up, and it's basically because we need to implement this interface we can do that by holding alt and then click enter there we go Just cleaned up a little bit then we also need a constructor um, so we need to avoid instance this one here oh that's too much instantiate command what does this command need to do um, so we have to go back here we need a prefab to instantiate and the position to, to uh, spawn the game object so game object to spawn game object and a vector 3 um, position to spawn and I made an error here. This should be public, not a void. There we go. Then we need a local variable from these. So let's create a private game object to spawn game object. Oh. The same for the position. So let's create a vector three. This is the spawn. Now here to spawn object equals oh, this equals to spawn there we go. and here as well this which basically means in this particular function the position should be equal to this one so this one oh sorry it's actually the other way around so this basically means this one and this one is from within the function so now that we have this the execute command should instantiate this game object so let's instantiate the game object like we do here basically we should instantiate this one and where on this position 
that sentient doesn't exist because we don't derive from modern behavior. So we can use game object dot and it will work. Now with the undo command, we need to undo this thing here. So basically destroy it. So we are missing a reference right now. So we need a reference to that. Bonnet game object. And here uh, we need to destroy no, game object dot destroy this bond game object. And that's basically it for the coding part. So let's create the UI. So we can make it work. We have a button, get another button, let's see where they are. There they are. Let's name this one undo this one redo this one oh, needs to command manager and it needs to undo the command same for this one except it does need to undo it but redo the command let's try it in action we can still spawn it yet again now we can undo it and hopefully we cannot undo it or redo it rather uh, let's quickly check undo ah that's because here we need to execute the command again and then now we can put it to the final test so we should be able to create these undo it redo it undo it and now start over again. So, oh, yeah, so it shouldn't do this part, but I think, let's get back here. Um, let's see, undo, ah oh, yeah, so here, whenever we execute a command, we need to empty the redo history stack. So redo history stack dot clear. And yet again, the ultimate, ultimate test, hopefully. You can create these, undo it, and now create these here. Undo these, redo these. And that's basically it. This, this is how we create a undo redo system. So thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, or maybe even leave a comment. In case you're unable to get it to work, I've also uploaded the project so you can download it. Please see the video description. If you have any questions, please leave them down below and I will happily answer them.